for month in full swing. So hopefully everybody is enjoying this very nice opportunity for us to make great progress in devotional service. Hopefully everybody is lighting a lamp every day, offering Dhammadarastakam prayers, and chanting more attentively, more in quantity, rendering more service, reading, whatever you may do. This is a great opportunity. So today we'll be discussing um, the uh, significance of Diwali and Govardhan Puja. So we'll discuss that. So we'll read one verse from Srimad Bhagavatam and then we'll discuss. This is the 10th canto, 26th chapter, and it's the 21st, excuse me, 25th verse. And the uh, title of the chapter, very beautiful chapter, entitled, Wonderful Krishna. Krishna is very wonderful. And the whole chapter is entitled, Wonderful Krishna. So, the verse reads as follows. Indra is like a summary of the whole pastime in one verse. I thought it was nice. Indra became angry when his sacrifice was disrupted. And thus he caused rain and hail to fall on Goku, accompanied by lightning and powerful winds, all of which brought great suffering to the cowherds, animals, and women there. When Lord Sri Krishna, who is by nature always compassionate, saw the condition of those that only had only him as their shelter, he smiled broadly and lifted Govardhan Hill with one hand, just as a small child picks up a mushroom to play with it. In this way, he protected the cowherd community. May he, Govinda, the lord of the cows, and the destroyer of Indra's false pride, be pleased upon us. Be pleased with us. Purport. The word Indra means lord or king. Thus in this verse, Krishna is pointedly called Indragavam, the lord of the cows. In fact, he is the real Indra, the real ruler of everyone. And the demigods are his servants, representing his supreme will. It is apparent from this and from previous verses in this chapter that Lord Krishna's lifting of Govardhan Hill made quite an impression on this simple cowherd man of Vrindavan. And they repeatedly remembered this feat. Certainly anyone who soberly and objectively considers the activities of young Krishna will surrender to him and become his eternal devotee in loving devotional service. That is a rational conclusion one should come after reading this chapter. Om Jnana Timirandasya Jnananjana Shalakaya Chakshuru Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Shri Chaitanya Mano Bishtam Stapitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kadamayam Dadati Swapadantikam Vandeham Shri Guru Shri Uta Padakamalam Shri Guru Vaishnavamsha Shri Rupam Sagajatam Sahagana Ragunatam Vitam Tam Sajivam Sadvaitam Savadutam Parijana Saitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Padan Sagana Lalita Shri Vishakan Vitamsha he Krishna Karna Sindhu Nina Bando Jagatpate Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namostute Tapta Kancha Nagorangi Radhe Rinda Vaneshari Vishabhanu Sute Devi Pranamami Hari Priye Vanchakalpa Trubhyastra Krupa Sindhu Vaivacha Patita Nam Pavanebhyo Vaishnavibhyo namo namaha Namo Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale Srimate Bhakti Vedanta Swami Niti Namine Namaste Saraswate Deve Gauravani Pracharine Nirvishesha Shunyavari Paschata Deshatarine Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadara Shri Vasari Gauda Bhaktavinda 
हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण सो दिस इज अ वेरी ब्यूटीफुल सेक्शन ऑफ ऑफ श्रीमद् भागवतम द 10th कैंटो अगेन चैप्टर नंबर 26 What was the name of the chapter? Wonderful Krishna. Wonderful Krishna. Isn't Krishna so wonderful? Yes. So today we'll see how he is so wonderful. So I uh, was asked to speak a little bit first on um, on Diwali, and what is Diwali? So we see in the English term, we say that this is a holiday. Right, this holiday, that holiday. So we have so many holidays. <clears throat> But what is actually holidays? It's a holy day. So in our uh, Vedic culture, which is really the origin of the culture of the whole world, the very auspicious holy days were celebrated as holidays. but with the progression of kali yuga our celebration of holidays have become anything but holy days so we'll try to reinvigorate our understanding of this important day so um we know that diwali um signifies the day that lord ram returned to ayodhya. ayodhya and we can imagine that the residents of ayodhya who had no other object in their consciousness in their heart but but their beloved lord ram being separated from him for 14 years what kind of anticipation they must have had for the opportunity to be reunited again with their beloved lord ram so this day when it became known it's said that hanuman ji was sent ahead the advance party to inform all the residents that lord ram was coming and so the residents of ayodhya in order to welcome lord ram they lit many many candles lights and this is very significant uh for us because as they were welcoming their beloved lord ram uh, back to ayodhya back to his home in their association similarly diwali is a celebration for us to open our own hearts and welcome the supreme lord into it with as much enthusiasm as the residents of ayodhya must have been in anticipating their reunited moments with lord ram similarly um you know we can observe this beautiful festival as an opportunity to remember uh our separation from the lord and the opportunity now to be reunited with him once again unfortunately we have by our own free will been separated from our lord for more than 14 years <laughs> many 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 millions of lifetimes have passed but by the mercy of shila propad we are now able to remember and re-welcome of course the lord is always seated in our heart as parmatma but it is incumbent upon us to welcome the lord with great love and affection so while we may you know very lovingly and very sweetly enjoy reuniting with friends and family we should remember that this holy day is a day to reunite with our supreme lord and this is the meaning of diwali 
Prabhupada explains, and it's also called Deepavali. Deepa means light, and Vali means numerous. Many. So today we can light many, many lamps. And these lamps signify the lamp of our devotion. It's a, it's a lamp of our love. That is all we have to offer Krishna. <laughs> what else we can offer Him? But simply our love. Right? So this Diwali day, it, uh, the actual day of Diwali is, is on Sunday in our calendar. Some day, one day here or there, some different calendar, but on Sunday. And we know there are five days of Diwali beginning with today, which is the appearance, or when Ganvantari gave all of the medicines. But the real medicine for us is chanting this holy name. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Hare Hare. Because with the healthiest of body, if we don't have healthiness of consciousness, it is useless. So this is a day we can remember our real medicine. And tomorrow is a day that Narakasura was killed, the great demon. Of course, the third day is the day of Lord Ram returning to Ayodhya. And the fourth day is Govardhan Puja. Govardhan Puja. Shall we discuss Govardhan Puja? This Govardhan Puja is one of the very most important festivals and pujas for us to observe. Anybody want to guess why? Why? So Krishna lifted Govardhan, yes. And why this Govardhan Puja is so important for us to observe? It's giving your food to everyone. It's giving food to everybody. Yeah. Who initiated this Govardhan Puja? Krishna. Krishna himself. And who did Krishna ask to, perf- to do this Govardhan Puja? People of Vrindavan. Including his own father. So Krishna, if he asks his own father to perform this Govardhan Puja, then we can imagine how important and instrumental it must be. And Krishna personally instructed how to do this Puja. You won't see in any Bhagavad Gita he instructed how to do some puja. Srimad Bhagavatam, whole Srimad Bhagavatam, you won't see. This is the one right uh, sacrifice that Krishna personally inaugurated. He started it. And of course, through his Shastra, many rituals are there. This is the one that Lord Krishna personally initiated. So it is very, very important. Um, for us to understand. For us, living in the shelter of Shishi Radha Kunj Vihari, it is also most, most important for us because it is the appearance day of Shishi Radha Kunj Vihari. They appeared on this day. They were installed on this day. So, very, very important. So let us discuss now Govardhan Puja. Um, in different uh, uh, features of this festival. As we read in this verse, it starts with Indra became angry when his sacrifice was disrupted. So, let's rewind the clock a little bit. So, Govardhan is a great mountain. And it uh, actually originates in the spiritual world. And it descended to the mountain regions of the earthly planet when Srimati Radharani said, I'm not coming to the material world unless Govardhan is there. So Krishna said, no problem. And Govardhan came. But how Govardhan reached 
Vrindavan is a story that the great sage Pulastya Muni, he had come from Kashi and gone to this mountainous area and he observed the extraordinary beauty of Govardhan. I said, wow, this is like no mountain I have ever seen. So beautiful. And he had a strong desire that let me take this back to Kashi. And there, which is a very flat area, this governor will create a nice environment. And all the devotees who are there engaged in various religious activities will be pleased. And this was his service. So he begged Dronachal, who was the father of Govardhan, that I'd like to take. And Dronachal was a little bit mystified. He said, how are you going to take this giant mountain? He says, no problem, I'm a great Muni. I'll just lift. So Govardhan, Giraj, said that, well, I'll give one uh, uh, condition though. That once you pick me up, wherever you set me, from that point I'll not move forward. And Pulashima said, okay, no problem. So he very easily picked up Govardhan and began to fly with his mystic powers across the sky. And as he was coming across they were flying over this land of Rindavan. And Giraj saw, wow, what beautiful place this is. So nice forest, winding river, beautiful land. And I like to stay here. So, Govardhan became very heavy. And all of a sudden, out of the blue, Palestine Muni was feeling fatigued and tired. So he thought, okay, let me take some rest here. And so he descended and he put Govardhan down and he took some rest. And after some time, he went to pick and continue on to Kashi. But Govardhan would not move. And then he remembered, oh, I made a big mistake because now Govardhan will not move. He became quite very angry. And so he cursed Govardhan. He says, Your greatness, it will diminish. It will diminish by the amount of one mustard seed every day. So to this day, Govardhan is going into the ground. And by the end of this golden era of Kali Yuga, also Govardhan will be completely underground. Will not see it. Just as many of the holy rivers will be dried up, many already are, and the rest of them will. And then the real Kali Yuga will start. If you think this is Kali Yuga, <laughs> wait. But don't wait. Finish your business and get out before it gets really bad. Because it's coming. It's coming. This is still nothing. This is not even real Kali Yuga. So like this, Govardhan is going into the earth, one mustard seed at a time. So this is how Govardhan reached um, Vrindavan. And the whole pastime revolves around Govardhan. So let us now see how this manifested. So after Krishna had delivered the, wi the, the, the wives of the brahmanas, <clears throat> that pastime precedes this. They were hanging out in that area with the cowherd boys. And there Krishna came across Nanda Baba and some of the elderly cowherd men. And they were busy performing and preparing for some things. And so they were wondering what was happening, what was going on. So this was on the day of actually Diwali. That they were uh, preparing. This is also the day, Diwali is the day that Mother Yashoda bound Krishna. Why? Because all the servants in Nanda Baba's house were out 
preparing for the next day's festival. So, so Krishna came to Indra, excuse me, came to Nanda Baba, and like a you know, young boy asked, Father, what are you doing? Why are you doing? What is this ritual? Where is it specified? How it should be done? It is not good to just blindly follow some ritual. One should know the meaning and purpose behind it. All these questions. Uh, and Krishna, thinking his father might, you know, uh, tell him, oh, not now. You know, this is not a topic for a young boy. So Krishna started speaking some Shastra that, hey, you know, one should not ignore one's family members. It is not good to, you know, not answer the questions and like this. He's giving some, you know, good philosophy. So Nanda Baba, seeing that Krishna was not going to relent, he tried to just ignore it. But we know what happens when uh, we ignore some child asking? They start pulling. Oh, oh, what is going on? So Krishna, like this, finally, Nanda Baba explained that, my dear Krishna, you know, we are all Vaishyas. We have some activities. And, you know, we are basically farmers and protectors of the cows. And so we are dependent on the rains given by Lord Indra to give us our wealth so that we can subsist. And so we must offer our yajna back to Lord Indra in gratitude for this. So, Krishna now, hearing this, embarks upon a, a, a set of activities that we have to understand very, very carefully and very clearly. Because... If we understand Krishna's pastimes through our material senses, we'll see that Krishna is a thief. We'll see that Krishna lies. We'll see that Krishna runs from a battlefield. We'll see all kinds of so-called inconsistencies. But as we know, all these activities are actually the Lord's supreme benediction upon all of us. So Krishna is going to stop this Indra Puja. Now, the unintelligent will think that Krishna is stopping this Indra Puja out of some envy, right? Don't worship Indra, worship me. Or, at least if not me, don't worship him, worship somebody else, something else. And that is why. But we have to remember, Krishna is Atmarama. He is self-satisfied. He has nothing to gain from worship. And also he has nothing to lose. If no yajna comes, he has nothing. He is self-satisfied. He has nothing to gain or lose. But Krishna has one feature. He has unending love for his devotees. And not only his devotees, for all living entities. He has unending love. And so, we know that Krishna is the protector of his devotees. Paritrainaya sadhanam. He is the protector of his devotees. Now this protection comes in many ways. But it is for the best. So Krishna is going to stop this Indra Puja. Why? Because he didn't want Nanda Baba to worship Lord Indra? That is actually one secondary reason. But the primary reason is because Krishna knew that Lord Indra was becoming prideful. He was full of pride. 
And so Krishna wants to protect Lord Indra. How? Because when we are, have pride, we are doomed. We are doomed. Done. Vanquished. Completely destroyed. It is our pride that led us here in the first place. And it is our pride that will keep us here. So when Krishna really loves us, when He really loves us, if He sees pride manifest, He'll smash it. Now that smashing may hurt a little bit. Just like if you are sick, sometimes you have to take an injection. Anybody likes taking an injection? It hurts. But that hurt is for our ultimate good. So Krishna, being very compassionate to Lord Indra, is now going to smash Lord Indra's pride. Because if he doesn't, Lord Indra will ultimately fall from his position and end up in great difficulty. And so, being very loving and compassionate, Krishna is going to do this. But Krishna, when he does things, he has, he can do many things in one action. And he also can do things with extraordinary effectiveness. And so, if we see the next chapter after I read, it is Lord Indra and Mother Surabhi offering prayers to Krishna. And this chapter is very sweet. Too often we just stop at the end of Krishna lifting over them and putting it down. But actually we should read this chapter. It's very, very sweet. So Krishna, to show his great love to his devotee, Lord Indra, he is going to break his pride. And he's going to do so in a very clever way. And at the same time, he's going to perform several other activities that we'll discuss as we get further into the pastime. So Nanda Baba has explained this pastime, this purpose of the activities, this Indra Puja. And Krishna now is going to stop it. And what he's going to do so he starts preaching to Nanda Maharaj about this through this atheistic philosophy called Karma Mamamsa. This is basically a philosophy that says that there is no God in control. You just do good and good is going to come to you. It has to by the laws of nature. Just do good and good will come. But what this philosophy fails to understand is who is arranging the laws of nature? That is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So Krishna begins to tell Nanda Brahman, why you have to offer this Yajna to Indra? He is giving rains by your own good. He has to give. He's even dropping rains on those who are not doing this puja. He's even putting rains in the ocean. What, what Yajna the oceans did? This is nonsense. And in this way he unfolds many different reasons. So finally, after explaining why he should stop, Nanda Baba says, okay, you know, Krishna, we can stop. But Krishna wasn't going to finish just by stopping. Instead he said, instead of worshipping Lord Indra, we should worship Govardhan. Govardhan is actually maintaining all of us. We are cowherds, men. Where is it that our cows are getting all the nutrient grasses to eat that creates all the milk that we are enjoying and using to create our wealth? Where is it coming from? Go over that. Our fields are being irrigated by water, rich, in minerals and nutrients. Where those are coming from? 
as the rivers and streams flow off of Govardhan. It falls into our fields. And then, nice crops are coming. It is the flowers all over Govardhan that we are using in our various religious practices. It's coming from Govardhan. So it is actually Govardhan that is our protector and maintainer. So let us offer our worship to Govardhan. Now you can imagine how Lord Indra must feel. Wait a minute. This worship that was directed to me is now going to a pile of rocks? <laughs> right? Because if Krishna would have said, hey, offer this worship to Lord Narayan, Indra would have had no issue. Right? Because no jurisdiction. Of course, that is my master. How I can object? But Krishna is very clever. Because that would not have broken Lord Indra's pride. That would have been just a sense of reality. So instead, he says, you worship this Govardhan to the eyes of Lord Indra was a pile of rocks. So much boga had been assembled, rice, flour, ghee, so many preparations were about to be made. And you can imagine, Lord Indra is going to lose all of that to a pile of rocks. So Krishna tells Nanda Baba this. Nanda Maharaj tries to negotiate a bargain or a, a compromise, I should say. He says, okay, we'll do this puja, Govardhan puja, on the next day. Let us finish our Indra puja and then we'll do Govardhan. But Krishna said, no, no, no. There is no time. We must take all these collections and immediately use it in the service of Govardhan. So he instructed Nanda Baba and all the elderly cowherd men to make mountains and mountains of rice and different types of sabjis, dals, sweet rice, pakoras, rasgulas, gulab. I know prasadam is coming in a little bit. <laughs> Huge mountains of offerings. And he explained in detail how to observe this Govardhan Puja. He said, we'll call the brahmanas. They'll chant various mantras. After they have performed that, you feed them nice prasad. You give them some charity. Nanda Maharaj had arranged many beautiful cows draped in elegant silks, bedecked with jewels. We don't see cows treated like this today. But this is how cows were revered in our real society. And these cows were given in charity. And then Krishna said, after feeding the brahmanas, you should feed all the society, including even the dog eaters. This is not that we should be discriminate. We should distribute prasad far and wide. And after everybody has eaten sumptuously, then what we'll do? We'll go on Parikrama and circambulate Govardhan. So like this, Nanda Baba and all the elderly men, they arranged this beautiful festival. All of Raj descended upon Govardhan. This huge Anukut offering was made at the base of Govardhan. The Brahmanas chanted their mantras. The uh, cows were fed wonderful grasses. Great charity was given. All the uh, guests were fed sumptuously. And then they began on Parikrama. And Srimad Bhagavatam explains that this was such a festive occasion that everybody dressed up in their finest clothes. You know, festival is the time. What to do? At least for the Mathajis. Dress up. Right? They coordinate, we're wearing this color this time, this, this, this. They have all these plans are made, right? Prabhu is not so much. We have a couple of dhotis, a couple of kurtas, but that's okay. So the, all the ladies, they dressed up very uh, beautifully. And they sat on oxen carts, bullock carts. And they went like this, around Govardhan. And who was leading the procession? The brahmanas and the cows. 
<clears throat> and they did Govardhan Parikrama. This is why when you go to Vrindavan, you should do Govardhan Parikrama. So Krishna himself took his whole family and all the residents of Vrindavan on Govardhan Parikrama. It is one of the important um, uh, rituals to follow in Vrindavan. Because Krishna himself inaugurated this process of Govardhan Parikram. So after everybody had returned to the place they started, having completed their Parikrama, Krishna knew he needed to resolve some of the doubt in the minds of these people. There, because they must be wondering, is this really right? They might be thinking, oh, we did not worship Lord Indra. We worship this Govardhan pile of rocks. How we can have some faith. So Krishna, knowing the heart of his devotees, when we surrender to Krishna, he exhausts our doubts. And so he, Krishna decided that he would start eating all the offerings as Govardhan. So Govardhan came alive and started to eat all of the offerings. And Krishna has separately manifested, saying, look, look, Govardhan is eating all of our offerings. And all the residents went in ecstasy. And then Krishna offers his dandavats to Giriraj, to Govardhan. And all the residents follow. And at this action, Krishna showed to us that he is non-different from Govardhan. He is non-different from <coughs> He manifests. To this day still, in temples, they'll have a shila of Govardhan and worship is non-different from Krishna Himself. And He showed this by taking all of the offerings. So now, the residents were satisfied. Yes, this, this offering was complete. Krishna came and ate all of them. Well, to them it was the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Right? Krishna, this boy, was not God to them. It was just their lovable object. <laughs> but now they saw the Lord came and ate all the offerings. Nanda Baba and Mother Yashoda are feeding Krishna every day, but they don't think that they're feeding the Supreme Lord. But today, the Supreme Lord came and ate all the offerings. So they were all in ecstasy and bliss. Just like we'll all be in bliss honoring all the uh, Anukut Prasad after the Lord has eaten. Like this, they were all in ecstasy. And so everybody went back to their homes. Everything is all well and good now? Yes. Except for? I mean, Lord Indra. Lord Indra is furious. He is furious. So much anger manifests. How far the anger went, he decided that this situation must be rectified. And he says that Nanda Maharaj and all the elderly, they have become, they have, uh, uh, are overcome with pride. Because of their wealth, they have now become very proud. And they have neglected their duty to worship me. Instead, they are hearing from this talkative boy, Krishna, who is just some ordinary human being, and they don't understand who I am. All of them have become overcome with pride. I shall teach them a lesson. So in this is a very instructive lesson. Who was seeing pride? Indra. And what was the position of Indra? What was he having himself? Pride. When we see pride in others, it is actually our own pride. When we, the faults we see in others are simply a reflection. So because Indra was full of pride, 
he saw everybody else having pride. This is the nature of the anarthas when they manifest the heart. And when these anarthas manifest the heart, they kill our bhakti. Just as when weeds in the garden grow wild, what happens to the desired crops? They'll die. Similarly, the weeds in the heart, if they're not uprooted, they'll take. So this weed, this weed of pride, we see one uh, illustration. And he is thinking that Nanda Maharaj and all the elderly cowherd men have become full of pride. Now when we have pride, when respect is not given, what happens? If I am humble, amanina manadena, I have no expectation of respect, yet I give respect to everybody. Will I ever be angry? But as soon as I have an expectation, and that's not met, now there's disruption in my consciousness. And this pride is the great um, destroyer of our bhakti. So, as I said, Krishna wants to destroy this pride. But we see the symptoms of pride. Because who is Lord Indra's worshipable personality? Who is maintaining him? Who is giving him the power to be in charge of the reins that everyone is dependent on? Who is given his position as the king of heavens? And now what Lord Indra wants to do? He calls the Samvartaka clouds. The Samvartaka clouds come at the time of destroying the whole universe. They create they make the whole world an ocean. That much rain they have. And he calls some vertica clouds and says, You come and I want to kill the cows of Vrindavan and show these prideful people a lesson. So you can see what happens when we have pride. We become completely delusional. We make decisions that when we are separated from the pride seem foolish. Does it seem very intelligent to, to, to uh, kill the residents of Vrindavan? But when we become overcome with pride, this is what happens. Our intelligence gets blocked. And so Lord Indra instructed <coughs> in Savartaka clouds are saying, well, I can't do that. That's crazy. And Lord Indra knew. They were reluctant. He said, no, no, I'm coming also. On my elephant. So, being inspired by and pulled by, Lord Indra, some vertical clouds began to shower. Devastating rainfalls on Rindavan. It was a nightmarish situation. Heavy, heavy rains. I mean, how much effort it would take to flood one small land of Rindavan when they can flood the whole uh, world. Columns and columns of rain, heavy, heavy winds, hails. A frightful situation was ensuing. The whole of Rindavan was becoming flooded. You could not see high land from low land. The cows were just becoming fearful, holding the calves underneath their bodies. Everybody was in fear. And the residents of Vrindavan, they thought this was hopeless. And whenever the residents of Vrindavan were in difficulty, where do they go? Gore. 
the seven-year-old boy is going to help them? How many adults, when they are in trouble, go to a seven-year-old child for help? This defies the conventional logic. But Krishna was always protecting the residents of Vrindavan. They had no other shelter but Krishna. They don't know Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. They just know Krishna as their all-lovable person. As this chapter, Wonderful Krishna, I'll explain a little bit, we'll see this really manifest itself. So, they came to Krishna. Now, Vishnu Chakravati Thakur comments that how, wait a minute, we said in Vaikuntha, Vaikuntha means free of miseries. So how in Govaka Vrindavan that these residents could be so in a miserable, fearful condition? How is that true? Right? It seems, it defies logic. But actually this is also one of the ways in which Krishna enthuses, ignites the love for Krishna and his devotees. He gives the explanation that when somebody is very, very hungry, the pleasure of food is extra satisfying. If you're not so hungry and you eat some, but when you are extremely hungry, like after like after Nirja like Adashi or something, you know, I feel like so excited to eat. So like that, sometimes Krishna allows his devotees to also go through some of these you know, seemingly distressful conditions only to ignite even stronger their love for Krishna. So the residents of Vrindavan being in this very fearful mood and Krishna seeing people were on the verge of fainting and passing out. He said, okay, I have to do something. And so he runs to Govardhan. Now the question we may ask is why Krishna had to go to Govardhan to protect. He could have simply have called Ananta Shesh to cover, and the rains would have not had any effect. He could have simply went, and some particle would have went flying. He inhaled a whole forest fire, and exhausted that fire. He couldn't have said, sent one cloud flying, so why he didn't do that? So Krishna, in one pastime, as I said, performs many activities. The first activity he's performing in this pastime is what? What is the first activity Krishna is performing? Huh? Yeah, but what's his purpose? What's the first purpose? Removing the pride of Lord Indra. Now we're going to come to the second purpose. So, Krishna had one thing. He has this astakalaya lila. These different pastimes he takes place throughout the day. But the residents of Vrindavan are always hankering for one thing. That they get to enjoy with Krishna... But after some time it ends and somebody else enjoys. Like Mother Yashoda, she wakes up Krishna in the morning, she uh, feeds him, she dr- bathes him, dresses him, doing all kinds of things with Krishna. But meanwhile, the cowherd boys are banging on the windows of Krishna's room saying, Hurry up, Krishna, hurry up! We have to go to the forest and play. And Mother Yashoda is not wanting to be separated because when Krishna goes to the forest, She'll not be with Krishna. So what she does? She has a great stall tactic. She dresses Krishna all the way up. And says, no, this is not good. And then takes everything off and puts a noose. And then, after look, no, this is not good. Takes everything off. And like this, she keeps redressing. Just trying to extend her time. But she knows, soon I have to give up. And Krishna goes to the forest. <coughs> So Krishna goes to the forest during the day and Mother Yashoda and Nanda Baba are separated from Krishna. And all the cowherd boys are enjoying with Krishna. But they know 
around five o'clock, what they have to do? Boo, we have to go back home. <laughs> so they have to go back home. And then the Baba and Mother Yashoda are excited again. They are reunited with Krishna. The cowherd boys are just waiting for the next morning when they can go back to Krishna. And now they are suffering in separation. And then Krishna will enjoy in the evening times. And then in the late night time, He'll enjoy with the gopis. And so like this, but then when the gopis are enjoying, you know, the morning comes and Krishna has to go back. So everybody is not having this opportunity. So they all had one desire. That let me have uninterrupted association with Krishna. This was their strong desire. So to fulfill that desire, Krishna enacts this next part of the pastime. Because he could have easily destroyed the cloud, covered it with an under, so many things he could have done, and everything would have been fine. But to fulfill this desire, he goes to Govardhan. Now Govardhan is a giant mountain. Eight yojanas long. Five yojanas wide. That's 64 miles by 40 miles. And 16 miles high. It's a giant mountain. And so Krishna simply picks up Govardhan. With great effort and intensity. He's been working out leading up to this point. Doing some push-ups, pull-ups. He is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. What is the big deal for him to pick up one 64 mile by 40 mile mountain? He has unlimited millions of universes sitting on the hood of his expanse in Anantashesh. And those universes on his head, as if a particle of dust falls on your head, do you feel some heavy weight? No. One giant universe is like a particle of dust. He is lifting. So what's the big deal for him to lift one mountain? So like this, he just very easily lifts with his left hand, not his right hand. Not with his hand, with his finger, but his smallest finger. And not even the finger. It's holding on the fingernail. What we can lift with our fingernail? <laughs> Anything? You try to remove one staple with your fingernail, you're worried about breaking your nail, no? He is lifting a giant mountain. And he says, don't worry. Right? Imagine, you know, someone is holding a boulder like this. You'll stand underneath it. <laughs> How much faith they have in Krishna. Giant mountain. And they're just going inside. If it falls, what happens to them? Chapatis. Done. But this is the faith in Krishna. We do to our ignorance. We doubt Krishna. We doubt. Is it this? Is it so? If they doubted Krishna... What is their shelter? Nothing. We have only one shelter. And that is Krishna. He is our only shelter. We search for shelter in so many other ways. But they are all futile. We have only one real shelter. And that is Krishna. And the residents of Vrindavan knew that. They didn't do any analysis and think how it's going to hold, what will happen. They just went. Because Krishna was their... Sh this is the symptom of pure bhakti. Unencumbered faith in Krishna. And so they, they went underneath Govardhan. Our Acharya's comment that how Govardhan could house the whole village of Vrindavan, that so many people, cows, animals. When Govardhan was touched by the hand of Krishna, he became so much ecstatic. He kept growing and growing and growing. And thus there was ample room for all of the residents to sit. And now, some very mystical 
but very important experience happens. To give us some faith that Krishna is truly our own only shelter and that Krishna is actually truly our only attractive feature. We, due to our narthas, find attraction in this material world. I like this, I like this. But actually our only real love is for Krishna. So the residents of Vrindavan gathered under this Govardhan. Seven days and seven nights. Uninterrupted darshan of Krishna. Their dream finally fulfilled. Now, one may think, yeah, but I wanted like, you know, my own experience with Krishna, right? Not sharing with the whole of the world. If we have somebody situated in the middle, and thousands and thousands of people come, we know, right? Some will be in the front row, some will be in the middle, and some will be in the far, far back, right? Some will be on the front side, some will be on this, this side, some on this side, and some on the back side. In a circle, right? By nature. Somehow though, Krishna was reciprocating with everybody in such a way that everybody felt as if they were the only one under Govardhan and that Krishna was only looking at them. How is that possible? Sometimes we wonder, you know, does Krishna know me? He has so many devotees, so many people. Does it, what about? Krishna is unlimited. And He reciprocates with all of His devotees in full. If He gives 100% to one devotee, what is left to give to the next devotee? 100%. And He gives 100% to that devotee, what is left for the third devotee? It's unlimited. In all the residents of Vrindavan, they were... In this intimate, up close and personal darshan of the Lord. Though by material calculations we'll see, right? Some are far, some are close, some are side, some are front, some are back. But no. And they could not get enough of the beauty of Krishna. They were just staring. Seven days. And seven, they couldn't satiate, satisfy their thirst for Krishna. So beautiful, so attractive. They forgot about hunger. They forgot about sleep. They forgot about the rains outside. They forgot Krishna was holding a mountain that could crush them at any moment. They didn't care about anything. Just enjoying with Krishna. This is devotional service. This is the potency of bhakti. He's our only shelter. Whatever we find attractive in the world, where that attractive feature came from, whatever we find attractive, it has some rasa, right? Some Potent, but Krishna possesses that in full. And the residents of Vrindavan, seven days and seven nights, they couldn't even get beyond the first surface of that attractiveness. So rich is this relationship. So Krishna lifted Govardhan to give all the residents of Vrindavan an opportunity to have his uninterrupted darshan. This is the loving relationship the Lord has. He's always fulfilling the desires of his devotees. Krishna says that you abandon all varieties of religion and surrender unto me. And how Krishna responds? By giving everything back to his devotees. Like I said, he could have easily destroyed the cloud. 
but no, to fulfill the desires of his devotees. This is the only... Krishna says, I only enjoy all of my royal spiritual world by giving my devotees pleasure. Without them, there's nothing for me to enjoy. So, Krishna held this hill. Finally, Lord Indra realized. You know, after they came under Govardhan, you might think, if it kept raining, how the waters didn't come into Govardhan, right? It is explained that not even one drop, as soon as a drop hit the ground, it evaporated. Not even one small puddle was created once everybody entered Govardhan. Not even one small puddle. You can imagine some vertica who very easily inundates the whole world with water, could not even make one puddle. Heavy, heavy, heavy winds and not one uh, petal from a flower on Govardhan was knocked off the flower. So Lord Indra realizes after seven days, my plan is not working. I've made a big mistake. I wonder why it took seven days. This is us. Why it takes lifetimes for us to come to take to the process of chanting, to read Srila Prabhupada's books, to accept a bona fide spiritual master. All the things we know, we know, we see it in front of us. Lord Indra knew after one day this plan wasn't going to work. But it wasn't sufficient. This is the, the depth of our ignorance. But by the mercy of Krishna, by the mercy of Guru Parampara, we can quickly eradicate it. So after seven days, Lord Indra said, okay, wrap this up. This isn't going to work. The sun emerged. The rain stopped. Krishna said, okay, everybody, you can now go back home. And Krishna put back down Govardhan. Now, this chapter called Wonderful Krishna is very sweet. <laughs> because all Ananda Maharaj's friends, after this happened, after the hill is put down, oh, it's getting late. Okay, I'll finish. After they put the hill down, I say, wait a minute. What just happened here? How did this seven-year-old boy, Nanda Maharaj, who is your son? How he lifted this hill for seven days? What is going on here? And then they started to contemplate. And they talk about, well, when he was a baby, he killed the giant demon Putana. When he was just a couple months old, he destroyed the demon Shakatasura. Tarnarvata came crashing down. He delivered the two giant trees, Arjuna trees in the courtyard. Subdue the demon Kalyanag. And like this, they're just explaining. Like, Wait a minute, who is this? Who is this Krishna? Is he some, you know, uh, uh, Part, powerful saint, or who is he? And so Nanda Baba then explains what Gargamuni told him during the naming ceremony. Where Gargamuni told him that your son, Krishna, he appears every millennium in different incarnations to deliver the world. But then what happened? All the elderly boys and cowherd men, they forget again. And they go back to thinking, oh, this is just Krishna. My lovable object. This is what Krishna does. He enjoys with his devotees in this very intimate mood. So after this, now Lord Indra realizes he made a mistake. And so he goes um, to meet Krishna. And Lord Brahma told him that you take Surabhi cow with you. You're going to need to butter up Krishna. Krishna loves Surabhi cow. 
that will put him in a good mood. And then you know. Now Indra does something very spectacular. Lord Indra, first of all, Krishna does something even more sweet. It's explained that they met in a private place. Why? Because Krishna did not want to embarrass Lord Indra in front of everybody. Remember, Krishna taking the puja away from Lord Indra was not out of spite, was not out of envy. It was out of love to help cure his pride. So he did not want to embarrass Lord Indra. So they were, Krishna goes to a very private, secluded place, just at the base of Govardhan, where nobody else was, and there he met Lord Indra. And Lord Indra offers his obeisances and begs for forgiveness. And they're very beautiful prayers um, he offers. I wish I could read them all to you all, but I, if you can, you read chapter 27. Very beautiful prayers about how he overcomes with pride, how he was overcome by pride, and how you know he lost his understanding of his position as a servant of Krishna, and this and and this is the thing. You know, we'll make mistakes. We have impurities in the heart. But if we approach it with some humility, we can overcome it. And so Krishna very creatively smashed the pride of Lord Indra. But you notice one thing. Did Krishna speak one word to Lord Indra? Did he, did he have to do anything directly? All through his clever actions, this was manifested. And this pastime is opportunity for us to remember one thing. Whatever pride Lord Indra has, we have many, 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 many multiples more. And if we don't think that, we are most foolish. So this is not a pastime to you know, celebrate Lord Indra's pride. This is a pastime to celebrate Lord Krishna's love for all of us. And we should beg Krishna, please, like you smashed the pride of Lord Indra, can you please smash my pride? This is the significance of Govardhan Puja. I don't know any of us have ever offered obeisance to Radha Kunjvari and said, my dear Radha Kunjvari, please smash my pride. And if we have not prayed like that, this is the day to pray like that. Because Krishna says, I'll just read, in response to Lord Indra's beautiful prayers, this is Krishna speaking. A man blinded by intoxication with his power and opulence cannot see me nearby with the rod of punishment in my hand. If I desire his real welfare, I drag him down from his materially fortunate position. So Krishna says, if I desire his real welfare. So we should pray to Krishna. Yes, it may hurt. It may hurt to extract that pride from our heart. But it is the greatest benediction for all of us. And as if we do, then this love for Krishna can grow sweetly. But without it, that pride in the heart will smash its growth. So, can I tell one more reason why Krishna lifted Govardhan? Final reason? Sure. So I gave two reasons already. One, to smash the pride of Lord Indra. Two, to um, give the residents of Vrindavan this great benediction of having uninterrupted association with him, fulfilling their desires. The third reason. I told you Pulastya Muni had brought Govardhan to Vrindavan. But this was many, 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 many yugas ago. And during uh, the... Ram Lila, when Lord Ram was trying to go to Lanka, we know that they were building the bridge, right? The Setu Bandhu bridge. And so there, the whole Vana army were bringing big, big boulders and big, big hills and mountains to make the bridge. So 
So Hanumanji had reached all the way far north to Vraj. And there he saw Govardhan. And he thought, wow, what a beautiful part of the bridge this mountain would make. And just as he was about to pick up Govardhan, his phone rang. And what's that WhatsApp message came? Bridge is done. Bridge is complete. Oh. And so, Hanumanji left. And Govardhan was devastated. Thinking, I was going to have the opportunity to have Lord Ram walk on me to get to Lanka. And now it's lost. So Krishna comes and tells Govardhan, don't worry. You wanted to be lifted in my service? When I come, I will come and I will lift you. And all my devotees will take shelter underneath you. So don't worry. So for this reason also, Krishna lifted Govardhan to fulfill also the desire of Govardhan itself. So this is Krishna's unending sweetness. And so for us to enjoy... Please participate uh, on Monday. There will be a giant Anukut. You know, Krishna did Parikrama around Govardhan. If we do Parikrama around this Anukut four times in the presence of Radha, it is non-different from doing Govardhan Parikrama in Rishi Vrindavan Dham. Same Benedict. So please come. Don't forget to do Parikrama four times. And then enjoy this most glorious festival on the appearance day of Radha Krishna. Thank you very much. Shri Prabhupada ki jai. Giraj Maharaj ki jai. Shri Govardhan Puja ki jai. Any questions, comments? <coughs> yes, Prabhu. Guruji, everyone knew that um, he was a uh, Eighth avatar and Vishnu's avatar. Um, so, why didn't uh, Indra knew it or Lila? It's not Lila. <coughs> we know we are fully in, uh, we are fully fallible personalities. We know that we are completely dependent on everybody else. I know if the sun doesn't rise tomorrow, my existence is vanquished. I know if oxygen in the air somehow goes out of supply, I am done. <coughs> Yet despite knowing all that, I know I am supremely independently powerful. I can do what I want. We have so much pride. And what does it do? It blocks our real intelligence. It blocks our real intelligence. This pride. And pride manifests in very subtle ways. So, Lord Indra knew, but because of the presence of pride, it overshadowed that knowledge. And he didn't see Krishna, what he saw, a young, talkative, ordinary boy. He didn't see Krishna, the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So when there is pride in the heart, will not see Krishna. Will not see Krishna. He is there, but will not see. Right? So this is the blockage that we must eradicate. Otherwise, we know I am part and parcel of Krishna. I know my spirit soul is connected to Krishna. I know I have only one source of existence in my life. I know that to get connected to Krishna, I need Guru in my life. I know all of this. But in the end, I really don't. Because I'm not acting on it. So in the same way, Lord Indra knew Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. 
the source of all this power. You read his prayers. He is speaking, you know, that you are the one giving me everything. Obeisance unto you, the supreme personality of Godhead, the great soul, who are all pervading and reside in the hearts of all. My obeisance unto you, Krishna, the chief of the Yadu dynasty. This is one of Lord Indra's prayers. And so he knew, ultimately. But when we have pride in the heart and other anarthas, that knowledge becomes covered, obscured. So it's not Lila. Actually, we see our Acharya's comment that even in through this extreme action, Lord Indra's pride was not completely destroyed. Because when Krishna goes to the heavenly planets and he wants to bring the Parijata flower, what happens? He blocks. Again. So this is again instructive to us that our pride is deeply rooted. It's deeply rooted. And so we have to work that much harder to afford it. But by the mercy of Krishna and Guru, it can happen very nicely, very easily. But we have to have strong desire for it. Okay? Any other comments or questions? Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, because Krishna tells Nanda Baba, I told you the one reason was for the pride, there was a secondary reason. The secondary reason is, Krishna says, Sarva Dharma Prityaja, Mam Ekam. He says, you give up all these varieties of religion, and you surrender unto me, alone. Now again, the foolish person will think, oh, that's Krishna saying, you don't worship all these other important people. That's Krishna's pride. That's not Krishna's pride. That's Krishna's love. Why? Because He is our only worshipable personality. When we worship Krishna, we worship and satisfy all respect to all personalities, all different devatas, all different persons. And in Shastra's the example is given, when you water the root of the tree, how many branches are nourished? All of them. All of them. All of them. <clears throat> but if you try to water one branch, what good does that do? Nothing. Nothing. So that's why Krishna says, in the Bhagavad Gita, he does not sugarcoat it. He says, Vritta Gyan, who worships the demigods, one whose intelligence has been stolen. Why? Because they are worshipping me, me in an indirect way. Why you'd worship indirectly when you can worship directly? So Krishna tells very clearly. This is the proper way to worship. This is the means. So to uh, instruct also for all of us, this also the second reason why this yajna was stopped. The primary reason was for the pro to to deliver Lord Indra, but the secondary reason is to in, in to show to us because. Look, I'll just speak bluntly. Krishna is the source of, Lord Brahma tells us, Anadir Adir Govinda. He is the source of everything. So whatever it is that we are worshipping from any other personality, where that potency came from? Where it came from? That's the absolute truth. 
that's the way. And what is the goal, the, the, the desire? But Brahma doesn't want worship for himself. That's why he establishes Krishna as Ishwara Parama Krishna. He says Krishna is the supreme controller. This is the way. This is the means. And this is the process. That's why Krishna says, Sarva Dharma. You can abandon everything. And by doing so, you will actually satisfy. One who worships Krishna has no other rituals that they are obligated to follow. That is Krishna's statement. And what is his authority to make that statement? He is the absolute truth. Nothing beyond it. If you're looking for a higher truth, it doesn't exist. Krishna's statement is the final and conclusive. Everybody else can have a secondary, but Krishna's statements are the conclusive because he is Anadir Adir Govinda. He is the source of all, including the source of all truths. It's okay. Huh? Just wonder why did they start? I mean, worship. Uh, yeah. Uh, do, do, did this activity during the starting of the winter? Uh, probably maybe it's time. To uh, it's the it's also considered a harvest time, during Prithu Maharaj's time after the great famine, and when they cultivated. This is around the time just before Diwali they did the harvest. So that is also so because all the all the agriculture for the year has manifested now. So they're offering their thanks in taking the boga from that offering back. That's why. Not in the beginning, because nothing is at, is at the end for everything has been cultivated from an agricultural standpoint. Yes. Any other questions? Okay, thank you very much. So, Prabhupada Ki Jai. 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 Jai.